I feel like I'm in a group of friends. Thank you. So this is a personal story. I've had an 18-year love affair with the Grand Canyon. The Grand Canyon changed my life. It changed who I am, how I think, what I do, and the trajectory of where my life was going. It's the longest relationship, most successful relationship in my life, <laughs> with the exception of my three children and my parents. And that transformation began on that first hike down the South Kaibab Trail. That first step, I started feeling it. You see, I was working at Arizona Highways Magazine, another dream job, and I got to work with an amazing group of talented writers, photographers, designers, editors. These people knew the state better than anyone, and they knew the Grand Canyon, especially Gary Ladd. Some of you know Gary Ladd, well-known Grand Canyon photographer, who was kind enough to take a couple of newbies into the canyon. He decided to take my friend Barb and a couple of other friends down to a camping trip at Bright Angel Campground. Now, my family is in this audience, and I know they're going to nod their heads. Before this, camping was not a priority in my life. <laughs> Peeing outdoors? Uh-uh. But we knew the only way to see the canyon was to get down there. So we did it. We walked down, and with each step we took, I felt something happening within me. Many of you know what I'm talking about. I felt this sense of peace, this sense of place, and that I was going home. The three days down there were magical. I don't know about you, but when you first see that Colorado River cutting through the canyon and you walk across that black bridge, you feel it. So with all good things that had to come to an end, we hiked out. We went home. At the time, I have three children. My two daughters were on their own, and I was living with a partner and my son, Zach. I came home and I said, hey, I've been to the bottom of the Grand Canyon. Look at me. <laughs> Nobody cared. <laughs> I felt different, but to them, I was still the same. I needed to get back in there. And so I bugged Gary and bless his heart, he said, sure, you are going to go down the Grandview Trail. Oh, <laughs> yeah. The Grandview Trail. Remember, camping wasn't a priority? <laughs> backpacking? I didn't own any backpacking gear. But typical me, I say yes without thinking and followed Gary down the Grandview Trail. Everything on my back was borrowed. I had cans and a can opener. <laughs> Two days before we started our hike, three feet of snow had fallen. I had lived in Phoenix and Hawaii my entire adult life. <laughs> I fell, I can't tell you how many times, walking down that trail. And to say that I was relieved when we got to Horseshoe Mesa is an understatement. But I, I was also enthralled. I had no business being here. I was working two jobs to put my son through St. Mary's High School. I had a family. I had a partner with a relationship that wasn't going too well. But I needed to do this. And I remember sitting on the, we were able to go down on the Tano Trail, and I remember sitting there and for hours just looking and feeling very small in this very big world. So after that hike, I made sure I went back several times a year for the next few years. I needed a reset. 
I would get a group of friends, we would go down to Phantom Ranch, have a glass of iced tea, hike out, and I would drive home the next day. I had a kid in high school. You don't leave him alone very long. <laughs> Over the course of those few years, the relationship failed. My son and I moved into a house not far from here, actually, and I started restoring that home in the free time I had. But I still found time to get into the canyon. In July of 2005, at this time, my daughters are on their own. They're married. They each have a son. My daughter, Sarah, is pregnant with my soon-to-be third grandchild, my granddaughter, Michaela. And my daughter, Valerie, is in the nursing program to be an RN. Zach had graduated from ASU. Whew, or excuse me, I gave it away. He graduated from St. Mary's, and he was accepted to ASU. Originally, he was going to live at home with me his freshman year. And in July, he informed me that he wanted the real college experience, and he was going to live at the dorm. Two days later, that same week, I received a call from the director of the Grand Canyon Association, my now friend Brad, my also frequent hiking partner. They had created a new job, a new position. Somebody was going to go around the state talking about the work that Grand Canyon Association, which we now call Grand Canyon Conservancy, did on behalf of their National Park Service partner at Grand Canyon. Additionally, this person was going to help the publishing team with the sales of their books and the marketing of their books to sell those books outside of the park's boundaries. Dream job number two. I wanted to say yes right then and there, but my dad had always told me, negotiate, 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 and think things through. So I played the game. We had a few phone interviews. I drove up to the canyon for an interview. We went on a hike and I accepted the position. I was leaving everything I knew and I loved, but I didn't care. I was gonna learn to backpack. I was gonna explore the canyon's backcountry. I was gonna go to Phantom Ranch and have an iced tea anytime I wanted. The Grand Canyon was a mile from my front door. Brad told me I was gonna be bored. There's no social life. You're a single woman coming from downtown Phoenix. I didn't care. Two weeks after moving, my first house guests arrived. I had friends of friends, family of friends. <laughs> Even my tenant's former graduate student stayed at my house. <laughs> I wasn't bored. And when I wasn't in the canyon, I was in Phoenix with my family because I had that grandchild coming. Six weeks, almost to the day that I moved to the Grand Canyon, I met Wayne Ranny. Woo! <laughs> yeah, we've been together ever since. Wayne has had his own love affair with the canyon. For over 40 years, he has hiked and rafted and explored the Grand Canyon. He's an author, a writer. He actually has two of his many books are published by the Grand Canyon Conservancy. He's a river guide, a backcountry guide, an international guide, and a professional lecturer. And he loves me. <laughs> I honestly believe that our relationship that Wayne and I have with the canyon is so special and unique and the relationship we have with each other has made our relationship with the Grand Canyon even deeper than it was before we met. Yeah. And since meeting Wayne, and since saying, yeah, I'll move to the Grand Canyon, I have done a 15-day trek in the Everest region of Nepal. I have seen the sun rise over Mount Everest on a clear day. A few hours later, Wayne asked me to marry him. Oh. I have been to the top of Kilimanjaro. Remember, camping wasn't a priority. <laughs> I've been on safari in the Serengeti. We spent a month traveling around Central America using public transportation. I completed a 21-day through hike on the John Muir Trail. And just this year, I went to Antarctica. I believe 
that the Grand Canyon empowered me to say, yeah, let's try it, let's do it. But it also taught me about these other landscapes that I've had the good fortune to see. Each and every one of the places that I visit are now part of my heart and part of who I am. And I attribute that to the relationship that I have with the canyon. This sense of peace, this sense of place, and the sense of I am home. I've transitioned again. Dream job number three. I'm a hiking guide. <laughs> yeah, you guys pay me to hike. <laughs> and now I have the opportunity to be like my friend Gary, to be like Wayne and others, to be like Brian, and show people the Grand Canyon through my lens with the hope that maybe, maybe they would too, like me, fall in love with the place or say, yeah, let's do it. You have nothing to lose. I'm gonna try not to cry. So Wayne and Sarah and Valerie and Zach, you guys are the love of my life. In Grand Canyon, you are my home. You are my place that I go to to reset and to find that sense of peace. Thank you. This is out of my comfort zone. But I'm going to dedicate this to my dad, Joel. My dad, Joel, passed away unexpectedly while traveling in France last October. He was on vacation. My dad, Joel, taught me to go out and see the world. We did a lot of that as a child. And so, in the spirit of my dad, I said, yeah, let's do it tonight. And I'm going to say, yeah, let's do it again. Thank you.